Well, Holy Roller has sat in Victoria Park since 1956. Uh, previous to that, the first from 50 to 56, it sat in Queen's Park or the Western Fairgrounds. No real maintenance or upkeep has been done on the tank since it was put in as a memorial. Um, about three or four years ago, Perry Kitson went in, took a look, and noticed it had a high degree of degradation on the inside. So it was rusting from the inside out. 2019, it was decided that we needed to do something so the tank could still be around for another 100 years. And of June of last year, uh, most people would realize that the tank came off the pad in Victoria Park and came here to Fanshawe. It's an important project because of all the war memorials we have, the significance of this is, is for the men who sacrificed their lives, specifically the men of London and London area, who sacrificed their lives in, in the fight during World War II. This tank landed 45 minutes after the initial assault on the beaches of Normandy. So the first wave went in, 45 minutes later, this line came in. This tank lasted from that point to the end of the war. Never got blown up, no battle damage to it in the sense that it, it was never damaged, taken offline to be repaired. No, no crewman ever died in it. It was a very fortunate tank. It lasted the entire length of the war. In order to preserve it correctly, we have to dismantle it. As you can see, uh, we have the turret off now, which was a, a large tasking in itself. That will help us move it to where it's going to get painted. So it's just a matter of, um, as opposed to building the model, we're unbuilding the model to make sure we can get all the rust, repair what needs to be repaired. It's going to be prime, painted, and look just like it did um, before it came back to Canada at the end of the war. Sitting in this position was known as the co-driver or the bow gunner. You can tell by the hole here, this is where the machine gun was. Uh, and he, he would help the driver. He also had a radio set on this side, so he would also be the secondary radio operator. In between them was the transmission case, which would come to about here. It's about this high. And in the winter time, the driver and the cold driver were very happy because they were the warmest people in the crew. The other side, of course, is where the driver was. Uh, and he had the duty, of course, of driving the tank. Tiller bars, clutch, all, all gear shift, no automatic whatsoever. On both sides of the hatches, you'll see these little renderings with little holes in it, and they're very small slits. So when the hatches were down and they're in combat conditions, this is what they would look out of to see where they were going. The tank represents something that um, I think is missing in a, in a lot of ways. Like, the people of that generation sacrificed a lot, for whatever their reason, to, to give us what we've got today. And it would be wrong to forget about their sacrifice. This is a memorial to those men. And it's important that we remember that. As they say, if you forget about history, you're doomed to repeat it. We can't forget what they, they sacrificed. I mean, we, you know, we, a lot of them died. They didn't come back. This just represents that. It just re represents the fact that this is the machine they went to war in to allow future generations to have the freedom to do what they want to do today. And we need to honor that. And to me, that's important.